Welcome FOH Masterclass with uh, Hamlet Perothers this week. Um, six questions from the floor. First one, Hammy, your favorite Cuban cigar and why? Okay, so hi guys. Good to see you again. Uh, whoever knows me knows that my favorite Cuban cigar is uh, Lusitania from Party Guys. And the reason being is I was doing that cigar for, for a bunch of years when I was in Partagas, and I was smoking pretty much two a day. And then I kept, I kept that same tradition after I left the factory and joined the, the stores. And, uh, and I have another one. I have another one too, that kind of like is my, my boy too, also Partagas, and a Partagas boy. And, uh, is the salmon. I, I love the salmon. The Partega salmon. I, I do love it too. But my number one is uh, still the Lusitania. I love it. Second question. Your favorite, your favorite Cuban meal. What, what do you enjoy? A traditional Cuban meal. What is your favorite? My favorite Cuban meal? Okay. Yeah, I do have it. I, I have a picadillo, like ground beef. The Cuban picadillo. We had like a little square fried potatoes. Oh, so good. And con gris, arroz con gris, which is like rice and beans together, but dried, you know what I mean? Like it's not like Christmas and morals. Like you can call it like that too. Okay. You give me that with a, with a piece of avocado uh, all day long. I, I can eat that all day long, all day long. I love it. If my mom does it. That's it. Favorite Cuban rum? Uh, Caney or Santiago de Cuba. Yes. You can't find Caney. I, 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 honestly, Caney is difficult to find now. Okay. I used to love, I used to love Caney rum. Um, I always did, yeah. Uh, I'm not too much into rum anymore, but. Now I'm getting into a little bit, like I get a sip here and there when I go down there. And I, what I do is I, I drink uh, Frode de Caña, which I, I like too. I like the Frode de Caña, Nicaragua rum. It's really, really good. Uh, the 18 year old is, whew, it's, uh, it's really, really good. And I'm, I, I'm into a scotch, so I'm not, I'm not into too much in rum at all, but it's really, really good. Yeah. But the Cuba, the Caney, can I always been. Last of the personal questions before we get to the cigar questions. Last of the personal questions. What's your next tattoo? It's gonna be the whole, the whole, this whole round. So I'm gonna do right here uh, my my coding blade, my chaveta. I'm trying to see how can I put it in there. So my brother is actually. We had that conversation yesterday. And I didn't realize how big it was. So it's too, it's too, I think I gotta do it smaller. And my brother gave me an idea, which I, I, I love the idea, which is kind of like my hand just kind of like grabbing the, the blade. And that, that would be kind of like the beginning of this. And the rest, I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the whole thing too, so. And uh, I know like, you know, tattoos they gotta be part of your life. So I got a lot of tattoos that I can put in my hand. If I talk about cigars and tobacco and factories and business with cigars, you know, like it'd be my whole life. So well, that would be that would be the, the next one. A couple of couple of cigar questions. A couple of cigar questions. A lot of the boys have trouble with plug cigars, yeah, out of Cuba, specifically out of Cuba. Plug cigars. What are the different ways that plug cigars can come about from a roller's perspective? From a roller's perspective, how what are the mistakes that come to make a plug cigar? Okay, so there are so many ways that they can they can uh, plug a cigar. Uh, the most common one is on experienced people rolling sizes that they don't they don't know how to do, so they don't have the the ability to. Because remember, guys, it's all about feelings, you know, like you. When you begin to put leaf in your hands, your fingers and your hand is telling you 
when to stop it, depends on what is the ring gauge that you're looking for. So a lot of people, they, they don't have that control or in most of the cases when that happened also is because the tobacco that they're using is, a, is, is humid, it's a lot humid. So and a lot of people have the, the bad habit to squeeze the leaf. So try this at home. Take a, no, you know what? I got, I got tobacco leaves here, so I can show you. I can, I can show you this. Hold on, wait a second. Give me one second. So, here we go. So when you have, let me show you, okay? So, the right way to do it is this. Very gently, you do the cube, and then you take the other one, but you don't, I just, I don't squeeze it. If I squeeze it, you see how down it goes? So when the leaf is with the right humidity, like this one, you can squeeze it, and then she always going to go back to normal. It's gonna open, it's gonna open up. But if it's with a lot of water, when you do that, it stays down. And then now it's a different feeling when I put all of this together in my hand. Okay, let's say I'm making a camera, okay? So my fingers, I'm looking for that 52 in my hand, okay? I still need another one. So now I got, I got the 52 here. I know that. Okay. So imagine that I'm, I squeeze it and squeeze it. So this, the leaf is going down, but let's pretend that this have a lot of water, it stays down. So then when I touch it again, I said, well, I need another one. And now is when I just destroy the drop of this cigar. Because what what's going to happen later on is when this leaves that they're already in a cigar form. They've already been pressed, they've already been bunched and pressed, and they have the wrapper on it with the same, a lot of humidity. So when these cigars just get to the normal temperature, uh, humidity and temperature, these leaves, they're gonna dry. And then is when they're going to spin. And then this is it. There's no room for the air to go through. That's one of the most common uh, mistakes that they do in the fight tricks. That's why when I, what I've been watching uh, in the non-Cuban fight tricks is they, they teach them how to work with the lips, kind of like dry, like dry that they got, you gotta get used to. Like if I, if I want to, as I did, Anytime. When I do roll in the factory that I'm blending, I'm blending cigars and I make cigars without any mold. So I, I, we call it freehand. I cannot do the same. I can do the freehand with that condition because they're too dry for me to shape the, the leaf in a, in a cigar form. You know what I mean? So I need to ask them to put the right condition of water and he made in the leaf for me to be able to handle the leaf and shape it in a cigar shape that I want. Because otherwise, I, I wasn't able, to, I ain't gonna be able to do it, you know what I mean? But this is the main reason. Uh, can I, can I ask you a question? Yes, yes I can ask you a question. So, in, in a lot of Cuban cigars, not a lot, I mean, significant quantity of Cuban cigars, it, when you feel the cigar, it's always tight around the, the foot, around the band. And it's always tight there. On the band? On the band, just under the band. Yeah, it's always, is, is it because oh, yeah, that, we call we call that the, we call that the neck. We call that yeah. the neck. Okay, so another, another very, uh, from, uh, very often uh, mistake that a lot of people do. And I've seen that, I can say this because I've seen it, I've seen it. I was a Galera manager, a second Galera manager for a few years. So, and, and I've seen it. 
they do something that when you when you touch a cigar, it's mainly with the Cuban cigars. That's what happened. Uh, it's a mistake that not everybody does, but a bunch of people do. We call it zapaton, okay? So the zapaton is, let me show you. Oh. Let me grab the list again. So the zapaton is, let me show you. Hold on. You see my, uh, okay, you see me now. Okay, so let's say I'm rolling this inside this leaf, okay? Let's pretend this is, uh, this is the binder, okay? So let's, let's do this, let's roll this. I'm rolling this, I'm rolling this, okay? Pretend I'm rolling this. So let's say that I, I still need more binder here. So what you have to do is, if the binder is going this way, you have to put the binder this way. And then you finish with the same flow, okay? Yeah. Boom, boom. So the sabaton is this. They set up the binder like this, always. But let's say they made a mistake. And when they're here, almost close to this, they feel, because when you're doing this, you're feeling also that you have the same even amount of tobacco all the way through. So let's say these guys that are lazy, this is a laziness. That's what it is. Oh, I'm missing. I'm missing a piece of tobacco in here. So what you should have to do, you go back, take a piece of tobacco, put it in here, fill it up, and then keep going. No, 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 no. They're too lazy to do that. They don't want to do that. So what they do is they, they take this and put this like this. You see that? Yeah. So now I'm going to use this binder in the wrong position to go around like a scarf around your neck, but tight, really tight. In the, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna refill that hole like this. So now you're gonna see. I don't know. If you can see it. Huh? So you see. So that's the neck. That's right, an inch away from the head. But then when you touch a cigar like that, say bye bye, sayonara, bye bye. Ninety nine percent of the time, there's no flow. I mean, you're just blocking. It's like if you had to take you and, and 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 I don't want you to breathe. I just put on a scarf, but very tight on your neck. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna suffocate you. That's what that, that's what happened. It's not all the time, but that's that's a very common. We're talking about mistakes. I'm not saying that they do this every day all the time, but I believe this this is one of the most common ones. The I'm gonna go more with the first one, which is the most common. Too much. Tobacco, that's mainly what happened. But this one is very, uh, actually, they have, I don't know if they still do it. I don't know if they're still doing it in the queue. I hope they do. Because I did that one, I mean, many, many years ago, like 20 plus almost, yes, 20, I mean, almost 30 years ago. Uh, we have every week, we, we broke. We call it the, the breaking day. So we took cigars from everybody and we opened them. We did a random, uh, in, a, in a bundle of the production from the day before, we took a cigar. The ones that we saw that they were kind of like, with more tobacco inside or they were too soft. The ones that we knew that we're going to reject, you know, no matter what. And then we yeah. opened it up. And then the first things we did when we opened, and that's what I do when I open a cigar, and I want to see what, what, what's going on, what happened, why it's burning run, or why it's not burning, or why it's not drawing, and, you know, or whatever the reason is that I'm looking for. I, the first thing that I, my, my first attention is to how that after I take, I've removed the wrapper from it, I just focus in how they bunch it. It's so important. Yeah. If they twist it, that's another, that's another mistake too. It's not very common, you know? We call it retorcido. You know, when you see people that 
you always got to keep this one is tightening this, but this one is making the lift to stay, you know, straight. If you straight. don't use this hand and you just keep going with this, it's going to do this. And there's no way the air can go. You know, you can do, you cannot do that. You cannot, you cannot do this. You got to keep all the lift like this all the time. If you do this, forget it. It's like, I mean, and just, if I turn you on the head like twice, yeah, and you don't die, you're gonna die because you can breathe. So same sense. So that's another mistake that sometimes happens too. Last last question, last question for today. And we'll do this on a regular basis. Um, okay. Because you're a fantastic resource that we have. Someone asked the question that you know how you, you put your leaves in, so it's basically tail to front. What if you reversed, if you reversed, if you reversed the way you put the leaf in there, what happens to the cigar? I tried, I tried, I tried 30, almost 31 years ago when I was in the school. I, 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 I always been like that. I always, I listen, but I don't believe it. I'm very hard in that way. So I, I want to try it. I want to see if it's true or not. So I always been like that since I, since I was a kid. So. And I was a kid. I was freaking 17, turning 18 when I joined the, the school. So, and I, I listened to this guy, you know, my, my teacher saying like, no, you never can put the leaf all the way around because you know, cigar doesn't burn right. And I said, okay. And I tried it and it didn't last that long. And the, the leaf has that aerodynamic shape and the veins are going always you know from from the back of the leaf to the front from thicker to thinner on the head always you're gonna have that's the most important part of the of the leaf the head you know so that is when and also the head is is the the farther part from the from the plant from the trunk okay so is the is the lighter part of the of the leaf, and then as soon as you I mean as you go in further smoking it, you should go this way, you know. If you blend the cigar in a good way, but that's a different question. So, but yes, so you no matter what, you always going to smoke the cigar from the head to the legs. Don't 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 do it. I I, I tried and I didn't last that, that long. The cigar just opened up and it's all over the place. You can't do it, so it doesn't burn right. It doesn't, and I, I had the experience with two, uh, two big guys. Like you know, one was the first time was uh, I don't want to mention the guy because you know uh, it's very well known in Cuba, and uh, and everybody was looking at him, and it was my first time giving like hundred cigars for a cocktail party, and all the eyes were. On this guy, uh, that cigar was smoking all over the place. Like it, it looks like in a cartoon. Yes, it looks like in a freaking cartoons when you shoot like uh, these old days long, you know, rifles that most of the time they explode like that. And then I'm like, wow, man. And they were like, they were Lusitanians. I was making for that occasion like a double coronas for everybody. Everybody was smoking great. And this guy, the main guy, was, I mean, and I'm looking at that, I'm like, oh my God, they're gonna, they're gonna fire me, you know? So, so finally he came to me, put it on the, it was very respectful, that's why I was respectful with him too. He put the, the double corona, or what, or what it looks, it didn't look like a double corona anymore. It looks like, I don't know what, so, Put it on the ashtray, and it's like, man, I'm trying, but, and then I just look at the cigar. I, I didn't know. I really want to disappear. I want to disappear. And I look in, and I said, I'm so sorry. Let me, let me. And then he began to be that guy. I said, I, I do apologize. I'm not a machine. I'm just a human being. I made a mistake. I did a hundred. I did 99 right. And, you were the unlucky one. You got the, the one that I made a mistake. I still, I was trying to think like, what happened? Because 
I do the same all the time, you know, like one after another. So I said, okay, I just, I screw it. You know, I'm not a machine. And then he was, yeah, he was raising his voice a little bit now. And yeah, but you know, we pay for this and blah, blah, blah. And then I just look at the cigar and I said, <laughs> hold on. And then I raised my voice a lot. I want like maybe out of a hundred people, ceased to listen to what I was going to tell him. I said, of course, you cannot smoke a cigar in a good way. You just lead the cigar in the wrong way. And now get the attention of 50, 60 people. I said, let me, that's why I wanted to cut it and light it for you because you are not a cigar connoisseur. You know about your stuff, but you don't know anything about cigars. Let me do it now. I don't want you to make the mistake again. So I cut it and lighted it myself and gave it to him. I said, try it. And yeah, after that, we became friends like, later on, but yeah, I have to. So what, what, what went wrong there? He, so he what happened the wrong was that line? I cut, I didn't cut it. I wanted to cut it because I knew, I knew, I knew the guy. He wasn't yeah. smoking just for, to be a smoking, but he's, he, he's not a, he, he wasn't a cigar smoker. He had no idea about yeah. how to cut it, light it or, or smoke it. So I said, let me, it's let him. me cut it and light it for you. And then he was like, no, 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 no. Give me the color. And I said, are you sure? Yes. So, and then I saw him, of course, he caught it in the wrong way. He caught it just like it looks like the, the foot of a cigar. He just, he went all the way down the, the handkerchief and everything. He just caught it straight. And, and I said to myself, eh, whatever. You know, I didn't pay too much, too much attention. But of course, uh, like 20 minutes later, when he lit it, he had no clue which one was, what side was what. Because he had no idea. I can see that because I, I make... So he, actually, he actually lit, he, he, lit the, he lit the head of the, he lit the head yes, first. He, no, lit, so the he head. lit the foot first. So he went the wrong way around. So he lit no, the he, didn't, he didn't, he didn't lit the foot. He, he lit the freaking head. Yeah, he put the fire on the head instead of the foot. You can do that. You can. Okay. So it's the wrong way. So around. it's, it's, yeah. it's common sense, guys. It's common sense. Whoever seen anybody making a cigar, you see that we when we put in, we we don't put glue on the on the binder, but the binder go this way, and after that we press it, and then we put the wrapper on the same way that the binder is. So, and then we put a little bit of glue before we close it. And that's for a reason. This little bit of glue is holding the whole cigar together. That's why when we do the, the handkerchief, the, the, the piece of rubber around the head, and then the hat, I mean, it's for, it's for beauty, but besides beauty, the main job is to hold all the leaves together. That's why you are not allowed to cut the cigars below this last line. Above that, whatever you want, it's up to you, but never below this. Because if you go below that, then you're taking away the glue. So sooner than later, the cigar is gonna unravel. So imagine you lighting that side, you burning the, the, the glue, this is it. Then the show, the nasty show begins. Leaves are gonna be open all over the place. So that's what happened well, to that then, guy. So, so, so gents, gents, uh, FOH members, when you're out there and you have your cigar, and we've all had it from, it's actually, it actually happens very rarely, but we have a cigar that just explodes when you light it. More than likely, it's just the leaves around the wrong way in the cigar. It is. It could be, I mean. More than likely, they just put yeah, it the wrong I way. Yeah, I so. I mean, every, every situation has their own explanation, but... But yeah. I, what I can tell you is that it only it happens to me when I try, and I abandoned that idea. It was a terrible idea that I did, and and it happens twice with this guy, and later on, like maybe like 15, 16 years later, it happens again to me with one of my cigars in one of my events. So only only twice with different people. Yeah. Yeah. Done.
Well, that's it for this week on uh, FOH Masterclass with Hamlet. Uh, Hammy, enjoy your trip to the factory next week, and uh, we'll see you the week after. I and will. we might do a video from the factory. We might do the video from the factory next week. It'd be great. I will. I will. I will. I, will. I promise. Look forward to it. I still work with people. Until next week. Bye, guys.